together to sing together from hymn number six, from Sacred Songs and Solos, hymn number six. While we are trying to do that, we welcome everyone else that may be watching us over the internet and say that the Lord will bless you richly today. And this is the Apostolic Faith Mission, the branch here in Peckham, and uh, welcomes you. Um, assuming you live quite close and you would like to join us this morning service, please uh, make your way as we're just beginning. Otherwise, we wish you a blessed viewing, and as well as join us in the evening when we have our evangelistic service at 5 o'clock. But meanwhile, Sister Alos is our song leader, and we start singing from Sacred Songs and Solos number 6. our praises. Mm -hmm. Our song, our next song is um, <clears throat> Shine, Jesus Shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining. So we ask the orchestra to sing with us. We'll take verse one and two only, uh, verse one and the last of this uh, song.
SSNS 411. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the message unto you I'll give. Look and live. My brother live. Look to Jesus now and live. Amen. May we look and may we live. Um, we'll take all the three verses seated. Verses 1, 2, and 3 after the introduction. singing it to be led into congregational prayers. Verses 1, 2 and 4. Um, on verse 4 we'll ask the orchestra to join us as well.
We glorify you. We worship you. Yes. Lord, we are not of this world. This is not our intention. We are passing through. Lord, come before me. And touch him to come. Let him be the day of deliverance. Amen. Lord, we call upon you. Lord, there are so many among us who are not yet set. chapter 2, verse 7 to 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 12. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, 
they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Twelve and last. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God.
us open our Bible to First Timothy chapter six. of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. My message to all of us this morning is to lay hold on eternal life. And I take a cue from the Word of God again, where we had our Bible reading. First Corinthians chapter two. I read verse twelve. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, Amen. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Um, every parent in this world wants the best for his children. Um, maybe they exist, but I've not come across one yet that really doesn't want the best for his child. But within that, our wish to have the very best for our children or our loved one, we have limitations that the very best that we can give is only things that start in this world and terminate in this world. The society where I grew up and where I come from, education, is very important and the competition to be educated is very is very fierce and severe and to the extent that for some people they, it's like if you don't have a degree you is like the end of the world for you and I remember many years when we got married, my wife had married her in the, court, in the court. We had the court certificate, you know, it was a traditional marriage after that. We get a letter from the father, then we got the certificate from, uh, we went to the court and got the certificate. And uh, as far as she was concerned, there was, no wedding, there was no wedding picture. And she was not going to be satisfied. That something was missing in her life, as far as she was concerned. We came to the church, and apostolic faith just stand that is very clear and clean. Reverend Okusenya told us, you're already married, so there's nothing the church can do. And as far as she was concerned, we must have a wedding picture. So we went to the registry again here in this country in order to have that. But you know, that is life desires. It doesn't take us to heaven. It's just like a jigsaw is missing. But you know, sometime in life, where we miss the Priority is what God wishes for us. The Bible clearly tells us that, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. And it cannot go beyond that. that as far as eternal life is concerned, that is freely given to us by God. Things to do with heaven is freely given to us of God. Here, in, yes, as much as we would wish that we give the best to our children, there are two limiting factors. The first factor is that you may try everything possible and they still don't get it. You know, as a teacher, you'll be sitting down on parents' evening, parents' day, you letting the father know, these are the strengths of your child. This is what he or she, she has achieved. And as far as they're concerned, oh, he has to be a doctor. And 
we have, you have, you know, you, you've, you've taught the child, he has to be an accountant. This child has to be an engineer. I'm not saying it's impossible, but the fact that we have taught, and this message will come not from one teacher, it's going to be from what this teacher, you go and you hear the same message, another teacher, another teacher. We, you know, a typical child studies up to about 11 subjects in school. And almost all 11 will tell you that this is what I think. You know, if we are not God, we cannot say otherwise. But you know, the parent will still believe that he's going to be an engineer. We will come and laugh between ourselves and say, well, good luck to the, to the parents and to the child. But that is the limitation of man that, you know, he, that, can, that one cannot pick up. And then it comes to another one that as much as you wish, you cannot give because you yourself are limited. But when God says lay hold on eternal life, it means that God can give it to us. Yes. And it's a free thing that God is able to give to us. And also, he has given us the ability to receive it. Once we stretch forth our hands to lay hold on eternal life, then we can have it. When the Bible says lay hold, it's not, it's not just a flimsy hold. It's, you know, grab it. Grab it with all of your force. Hold on to it. And once we, we realize that that laying hold is Hold it and don't let go. Our salvation we should not let go. And those that are not saved should let go of the world and lay hold on eternal life. Hold on to the things that will lead you to where God is in person. That is what God has for you. It doesn't matter what your parents, you yourself have for yourself, your parents have for you or I have for myself. Because why did Timothy warn us in uh, that first Timothy chapter 6 that we read? Well, maybe we can start to read again. From the sick, but godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be here there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men into destruction and, per and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Amen. Timothy has basically put everything into context and say, yes, these things exist in that first Timothy that we read, that these things exist. You have to eat. You have to live. But in it, living in holiness, a godly life, he has made the separation that it is contentment. There are times, you know, this, our continual struggle in this world is lack of contentment. We are not satisfied, never satisfied. And you know, the, the life is like you, you achieve one, like uh, um, um, Shakespeare said, that the world is like a stage. Everyone will come and do their drama and perform, and after they will exit. Life is like that. One measure today, you achieve that one, is like nothing. What is that all about? I mean, yes, I'm, I'm standing here, I was wondering, as I told you in my previous story, how does degree look, really look like? 
And when you then have it, you discover that, okay, it's a piece of paper with my name written on it. And, so, and saying that you've achieved this, and they will list maybe the subject that you've achieved. And that's it. And you, so all of, so is that all of my teenage and adult, early adult life, is that what it was all about? And you say yes. Then you pass that one. Assuming you get that, and that is the satisfaction, and it just stops there. It will be, it will be good, wouldn't it? But afterward, you still have to look for a job. And then when you finish looking, when you get the job, you still have to look for promotion. If you're not happy, you want to leave. So you, it continues and continues and continues because of these forces. The chances are that you will forget about the one that will make you to see God face to face. That is salvation and eternal life, a life of godliness, a life that will make God happy with you here in the world and direct your steps in a way that will make you to see him face to face. You know, these things are as if sometimes we do as if we are wiser than God. No, we are not. The Bible clearly tells us there that we should follow the things that are freely given to us of God. Salvation is freely given. Yes. Sanctification is freely given. Yes. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is freely given. Yes. You know, the healing God gives is powerful than the one doctors give. Yes. It's just that the one God gives goes straight into the marrow. Yes. It goes right to the source yes. and excavate that which was troubling you and throw away. And then you will rise up and say, ah, is it the same me? But because God has performed the one no man can reach. Yes. And that is why it becomes, it becomes peculiar and a wonderful treasure. Yes. So there's no way we can compare, man, compare man's act with God's act. But the important thing is, have we reached that point where God works in us? Have we laid, oh, does God see that this is my child? has decided to follow me. He's, he, he, he's laying hold on eternal life that, so that I can help him. And this message is not just uh, to say that, yes, um, it's, it's meant for just the unsaved. It is for everybody sitting down here, as we can read from First Peter chapter 1. Verse 2. He looks according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Amen. It is a message for the elect according to the foreknowledge of God. God said, Esau I hate and Jacob I love. We can't change that. Because God had known him from the beginning, from the womb. He said to Jeremiah, from the, from the mother's womb he formed him. But if we can change our ways, God will take us right also as one of his elects. Amen. Because God hates nobody. Let's be very clear and frank. God hates nobody. God loves everybody. Yes. If any hatred happens, it's because we hate God. God doesn't hate us. In love, he will wait until we understand what we are doing and be drawn to him with his cord of love. If it is not love, do you think Nebuchadnezzar will ever uh, become the king of Babylon again? Someone that has suffered in the bush for, for, for seven years eating grass. He was the love of God that gave him that respite. Yes. And said, think twice. And then he, looked, he saw himself where he should not have been. And many of us are here seeing ourselves in the mirror exactly as we are. My wife used to say, you have to, you have to know so many words before you can teach. Because one time I, you know, she managed to get a job as, a, uh, as an assistant um, uh, in the school, teaching assistants. And the things that happened, the things that happened in the class, she said, she can't cope. I said, okay, that is what we have to go through. And then when I'm, when I'm in, the, in the lesson, and, and then someone will laugh, I just say, go and stand in front of the mirror and laugh. And by the time I said that, everybody, I said, well, that is the truth. 
And the next time the student will understand that I need silence. You need to listen to me. Let us examine ourselves as if we, because God sees us as if we are standing in front of the mirror and looking at ourselves. From head to toe, God sees who we are and what we are. So we cannot come and then say that God doesn't know us because God knows. What if it, the intent and the purpose of our heart, he, he knows. The one thing God always wants is draw us with that cord of love to lay hold on something that will translate us into eternity. And that is this gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's read Titus 1. From this one. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the knowledge of the truth, which is after godliness. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, but had in, in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto the unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. If you take that and start to break it down, you will see that the tendency, the trend, the trust of the argument is still on one thing. The first one is about the faith of the elect of God and the knowledge and truth after godliness, that it is the most important thing. And why do we do? Why are we to be righteous? Why should we um, walk in holiness? Because in verse 2, so that we can have the hope of eternal life. Many things may happen in this world, but it will finish here. And our people have a say that the future is longer than the past. So in order that we may be great particip participants of that future, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. <coughs> Therefore we cannot say, oh, it's a temporary measure. God had foreseen that we would need it. He promised it and in fact, he brought so many things to bear to make sure we have the path, the root path to reach eternity. But the most important decision has to be made by you and myself. Is that the path for me? This path of God, this path of holiness, this path of laying hold on eternal life. Is that the path that I want to, to go to go to? Or do I have to choose another path which is going to be detrimental in the end? We come to church because of verse 3 of Titus chapter 1. But had in due times manifested his word through preaching. So what I'm saying to you I'm saying to myself. So, there are so many other ways, but preaching is specifically mentioned here, which is com committed to us according to the commandment of God. And Paul could say to Timothy, this is what you need. And I can say that to you, as well as myself. This is what we need. Lay hold on eternal life. And Paul, by this time in his life, has gone through a long and odious life. He, he knows what the past 
was about with him. He knew what he was in the past. He knew what he is when God converted him. And he knows what the future will hold. And he's sitting young Titus down and telling him, of everything, is that Timothy down and say, of everything, make sure you lay hold on eternal life. Is that, is that Titus down now and say to him, make sure you lay hold on eternal life. Because this is what God has promised from the beginning of the earth. Other things will come into place. You can be a wealthy fellow. Good luck. It's not bad. But what will you count when God calls you? What is it that you will say to him that you have achieved in this world? You know that there will be no negotiations. You won't be given a chance like the court to present your arguments and then you have your barristers behind you and then you can go to the higher, mighty and higher. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's a, it's a silent court. You know, when people don't like what happens in the, in the, in, in, in the world here, they say, oh, it's a kangaroo court. No. It's not like that. It's, it's just, you're just going to be dumbfounded standing there and everything will be revealed, but then there's no remedy. Now is the, now is the remedy. Yes. The future starts now. Yes. So, if men of God have from eternity sat us down and told us this is the way forward. Like, my mother wasn't rich. She was just a petty trader. As far as she was concerned, go to school. Not that the school was free. And my father, though, yes, he was well to do. But he never let you enjoy life because of his money. No, 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 no. He, he will be going that direction with his car and you'll be walking down to, to go and see him. That is, that is the life that I grew up in. And those things did not deter me. If I, if I see a bicycle to ride down there, fine. If not, so I start making my journey. But I will not necessarily pass that to my children because I suffer, no. But that is what Satan passes on to do that are under his territory. Suffering, problems, heartache, pain, sorrow. That is what Satan passes down. Initially, it might not be, it might not be revealed, but that is where it is getting to. Regret. And regret never makes the past right. When even someone says, oh, it's regrettable. Yeah, it's regrettable now. It's on hindsight. You come to think through and think about it. But it doesn't stop the calamity that has happened. <coughs> it can only soften the blow of feelings. So laying hold on eternal life is a message for you and myself. That the trans, you know, the trans, this, whatever transcends from here, so that it, may, it will lead us to those things that will make us to see God as he is. And it's not because of my word, but the Bible says it is the express promise of God right from the beginning of creation, or even before the world was formed. And that through preaching is a, is a medium where we can express our Authorizes one to another. In the same title, as we read chapter 3, verse 7. You cannot be saved without a purpose. Titus 3, 7. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That is what salvation should be. That's what our justification should be about. We are justified because we have the hope of eternal life. Otherwise, there's no point. Paul clearly t you know, told, sat him down, oh young man, you claim that you've been saved. Thank God. Sanctified. Thank God. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Thank God. Have victory. Thank God. But make sure that that justification is with the hope of eternal life. And it's, 
It's not a situation of rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. You see, we, when that happens, we don't enjoy Christianity. But we, we have the right to be saved and remain saved. Amen. And enjoy Christianity. And just, after 10 years, for example, of being saved, you look back. That decision that you made 10 years ago and see the fruit that you reap in 10 years. It's enormous. If God keeps you for 20 years, it is enormous. If, you, if God keeps you for 30 years, everything about you, and you reflect back to when you were saved, they say some decisions that you will make, and you don't even know how. How you made them. Now that the fruit has come. It is because God is behind it. Yes. And it is because you have to purposely determine to lay hold on eternal life. The Bible enjoins us quite clearly that to be saved is to have a vision of eternity. Yes. If we allow that to be lost or blurred, then we are in trouble. And God's standard is one. It's one there. Some I have discussion who said that the love of God is in the heart. And I agree it's in the heart. But the love of God in your heart should transcend into how you appear. Yes. You know, it's very simple, very basic. Uh, I went to the tailor yesterday, you know, I had this long sleeve that is not very nice being long sleeve. I said, can you cut it now? He, he measured from there to there and, and, and said, no, I said, can you make it a bit longer? He said, no, it's usually 11, but I, you want 13. I said, yeah. He said, no, no, no. I said, Hmm, it's a short sleeves, and I don't want problems when I'm wearing it. I just want to be happy. But can you make it a bit more than 11? Because it's not about me. It's about what others will say about me. Our heart people have an adage that what the man says about you, you are that. It's only God that can defend you not to be that. It's only your actions that can defend you not to be that. So, you know, I have to take serious precaution. And I know every one of us should be longing for that precaution. What is that extra mile in me or the way I look or the way I do things that people will say, is that truly the love of God in the heart? Is it truly the love of God in the heart? Our God has standards. It doesn't really matter what, what people say, but I know God is a God of standard, orderliness, and ordinance. Yes. Yes. And he requires it of us. I can have that discussion and that say, okay, love of God is in the heart. And I'm not going to, as far as I know, my, one of our sisters, God bless her, says, is it not the same salvation? He said, I asked my daughter, is it not the same salvation that I had, that you say you have? So this laying hold of eternal life is everything about us, between us and God. And in that between us and God, truly get into what God wants of you. Do what the psalmist is asking, search me, O Lord, and reveal my thought, reveal myself to me. Because God is faithful and will do just that. This eternal life that we talk about, we can check in Hebrews. Chapter 9, I read verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen. Yes. 
They we shall call they that are saved, they that are sanctified, they that are baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. You who is not saved, you that you may have conviction to be saved, that you receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That is what God has for us. Once we receive this promise of eternal, eternal inheritance, other things will follow. First thing first, seek God. Yes, first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Other things will be added. God is not expected that we can be saved as Christians and then we are starved. We beg for food to live on. No. He will take care yes. of us and everything about us. Yes. So let's just, first of all, seek to receive this promise of eternal inheritance and hold on to it. And you will see many things fall in place. Even those things you never thought would fall into place. Yeah. You will see it fall into place like a, the puzzle that you couldn't make it work before. You will see you, you, you put the jigsaw together and it will become the proper object. Because God is in it. It's, it's, you know, it, it, it's not scientific. It's not mechanical that like you say I don't have the knowledge of this thing. It's very simple and straightforward. I mean, I was talking to one of my colleagues, a teacher. Um, he said that they had some issues in the family. He said, what happened? The mother, he said, there are six in the family. And the mother died. And now to, to share or to divide the house was an issue said him and her mom herself and the brother used to live used to be there closer to the mom or something like that and the other four now after the mother died they two of them met or gathered some money and gave to the other four in lieu of the house and then when the other four sat down and thought about it after some years they said no it was not enough now we want more and these two rose up and said, no. I mean, blood, brothers and sisters, same mother, same father, same mother, same father, same mother, same father, ended up in the court. Two against four. So, if we're talking about early inheritance, is it worth waiting for it? For someone else, the judge, to decide. And I told her, and I said, what, what, what then happened? She told me, well, I laid the case for the two, and I was the barrister in the court. I was everything. I read, I read white. And because I was on my own, the judge always translated or always was careful. And then I said, okay, what happened to the other four? I said, they spent nearly 50-something thousand. In, on, 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 on the lawsuit. I said, what, what did it happen? The judge decided in our favor. So what happened to the other one? He said, it's a, it is, it is a chaos in the family. Is that what you're going to wait for? The inheritance of this world. When you don't know what else is going to happen. You don't, I just told my, I think my, my father that in 1992 till today, no one shared anything, not even a pen, not, not, no, it's not, it just there, it's just there, because they can't agree. So some of these things just teaches me, is it worth the while? And it's not worth it, because what is yours, God will give it to you. I mean, if, if you take the case I've just given to you, don't spend 50 something thousand, and you can still lose the case, and then you are in there forever. What's going on? But because sometimes we misplace the priority on what is a true inheritance. What has God left? What has God left for us? What has God for us forever? Eternal life. Yes. And says that. He promised it from the beginning of the earth. Lay hold of it. There are many things that will come in between, but you can 
sad, sidetrack those issues. Uh, one of our preachers came here from Norway. He preached and said, when you have sanctification, like you are like the, 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 the wiper on the, uh, on the windscreen. You know, as, as rain comes, he takes it off. As rain comes, he takes it off. He said, God is like that for you. As many things will come to interfere with your Christianity, that sanctification will be wiping it off, wiping it off, wiping it off. And that's what, that is because if we, once we purposefully choose it, then it, it, then it is that way for us. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 44, the Bible describes it as a treasure which we studied in our lesson not long ago. Again, the kingdom of God is like unto a treasure hid in a field, which when a man had found, he hid it. And for the joy thereof, go it and sell it all that he had, and buy it that field. That treasure is hidden. It's a very, very hidden treasure. And it is only open to those whose hearts are open towards the Lord Amen. to come, to ask, to receive. We could also read in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 15. You will see the, the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the coins, the parable of the lost son. All of them were found. But if we put ourselves to make the discovery. You see these uh, treasure hunters. When I, I see pictures or images of them, you see they had this thing that they go around in the field and they will be doing like that, laboring day and night. What are they looking for? Treasures. And some of them, they will uncover treasures, ancient treasures that has been hidden for years and it will be worth their while. But the search for that treasure, the search for that inheritance is between you and I. And that is open to us on the altar. To come and lay hold on eternal life. To come and seek for that treasure until we find it. To come and ask God with that we must never make hell. This weather tells us that hell will be terrible. And that if we want God in our lives, we come and ask and tell God, please, whatever I have done, all my sins, forgive me. Let me never taste hell because it will be terrible for those who have missed the last.
glorify you for your love towards us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life. Amen. Father, that is still given freely this afternoon. Amen. Jesus, come and save. Amen. Sanctify, Holy Lord. Amen. I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Give us a reason to rejoice today, O oh Lord. Amen. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.